so one of my favorite extensions for SketchUp is Placemaker. Placemaker is an extension designed to let you create an entire city using just a single click. So you find a location and then you can click a button in order to bring in all of the different buildings and roads and everything else. So Placemaker is currently on sale and I know a bunch of people have purchased that. So I wanted to make a quick video just kind of showing you how it works um, and also just how to use it. If you are still interested in Placemaker, Placemaker is still on sale. You can check that out on my Black Friday page at the SketchUp essentials.com slash Black Friday. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things I really love about SketchUp extensions is when they can automate a bunch of work. So when there's a lot of work that you would have to do, they can automate out doing that work instead of you having to do it yourself. And so that's one of the great strengths of Placemaker. And so what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's start by selecting a place. So the way that Placemaker works is you go ahead and you select a location um, that you want to bring things in to SketchUp. So in this situation, I do Denver a lot. Let's go to Colorado Springs and see what comes in from there. So we'll go down to Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we'll bring in downtown Colorado Springs. So this is basically the whole downtown area of Colorado Springs. And I'm really kind of interested to see what comes in. But you can see how what you do is you select a location to start off with. So in this case, I've selected downtown Colorado Springs. And you click on this button for select area. And you can click and drag these little points in order to select a different area to bring in. So if you only wanted this stretch right here, you could bring that in. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this as is. And I'm going to click on import area. And so what that's going to do is that's going to bring in a map view view of Colorado Springs. So you can see how this brings in the satellite view of Colorado Springs. And I think that's coming from Mapbox right now. I'm not 100% sure. There's nothing really special about the, there, there's nothing really special about the imagery that's being brought in just when we first start off. So there is an option in here for higher resolution imagery, which we'll talk about a little bit in a second. But first I wanna talk about some of the other functionality that's in here. So um, if you look at this, this gives you a number of different options of things that you can import. So you can import different kinds of imagery. So that'll be higher resolution imagery that you can bring in. There is a cost associated with that, especially for the near map data, um, but it's also a lot higher resolution than what's in here currently, or really what's available anywhere else. Um, and then there's roads, paths, buildings, and the buildings for the USA, um, since they got the Microsoft buildings data, is pretty amazing. There's a ton of building data in there now. Um, there's also water and there's trees. And so you really have two options for this. You can either click on this button right here for make place. What that'll do is that'll bring everything in at once and um, except the high resolution imagery or you can click on each one of these individually. So I figured I'd walk through each one of them individually so you can kind of see what it does. So to start off, you can click on the button for roads. And so what this will do um, is this will bring in the road data for this area that we have selected. And this will actually generate roads that this will drop onto this uh, onto this map. And there's also an option in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and let this work for a minute, but there's also an option in here. If you were to bring in terrain, this will drop the roads on the terrain as well. So you can have, you, you can do fully 3D terrain in here as well and drop the roads on top of that. And so you can see how what that did is that came in here and that took the road data and that actually generated roads that go on the surface of this downtown area. So you can see how this added the roads for basically everything that's in OpenStreetMap for roads. So you can see how this is really detailed. If I was to come in here and unlock this and hide it, you can see how there's just a ton of detail in here for those different roads. So now we can click on the button for paths. And so you need to make sure you select your surface when you do this, but this will pull in all of the path data that can be found inside of OpenStreetMap. So this is gonna go find everywhere where you've got like different paths and sometimes you get sidewalks as well in urban areas. So this will bring those in here as well. 
So for example, you can see how this brought in different paths and sidewalks all the way around this park that's over here. And then you've also got some sidewalks that are brought in here from the downtown area as well. Now I think in residential areas you may not get quite as much on that. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I haven't honestly paid that much attention to it. But generally speaking, this does a pretty good job of bringing in all of that different path data. So now let's go ahead and we'll skip the buildings for a second and we'll come back to it. Let's go ahead and bring in the water real quick and there shouldn't be too much in this area. I don't know if there's any to be honest with you. Um, if there is any water in the area this will bring this in. You can see how you got a little bit down here. There's a little lake down here but if there is any water in the area that'll bring that in. And then also if you click on trees, anything that's been labeled as a green area inside of OpenStreetMap, this will bring trees in there. So this works a little bit better in more populated areas. So you can see how you get a little bit in a couple of these parks, but um, in, in higher, in areas like Denver or Chicago or other places like that, there's just more data and so more of that comes in, but that is an option. And then finally, let's take a look at the buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the button for Buildings USA. And so what that's going to do is that's going to bring in buildings in this whole area. So this is going to basically bring in buildings based on geographical data and it's going to generate those buildings in here. Now there is one thing to note about this which is there's some high rises over here that um, are really taller buildings so those come more out of the buildings global rather than the Microsoft buildings so you may need to run this again with the buildings global in order to bring in some more of that high rise data so you can see how this is going to come in here and for the taller buildings there's other information contained inside of OpenStreetMap that that gets brought in here. So you can see how you're getting a lot more detailed data in the downtown areas. So really kind of the best way to do this is to get a combination of the two, but you can see how now, and Colorado Springs doesn't have super tall high rises to begin with, but you can see how now we've got the high rises down here as well as the rest of the building data as well. So I was able to do all of this with like four clicks and we could have done it with even less than that if we'd really wanted to. So the last thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to hide the building buildings and I want to get back to just my geographical data. So we'll go ahead and I don't think any of these gives me just the imagery. So what we'll do instead is we'll minimize everything in the outliner. We'll do a shift click on our uh, map and then we'll hide everything else so we can just get into our map. And so let's say for example that I wanted some higher resolution data. So let's say with this area right here where my high rises are I wanted some more detailed data. Well what we can do is we can bring in near map imagery which is like ultra high resolution imagery um, in order to bring in that higher resolution area. Now one thing that I recommend when you do this is if you right click on this and unlock it you can come in here and you can actually edit this surface and you can draw a rectangle to split this face up because really all you want to do is you want to bring in that high resolution data for this one area, right? Like you don't want it for everything over here. You don't really need it for that. We just need it right here. So what I do is I split this up and then I select the option for near map and I click on this button. And so that's going to bring up your little window that shows how many image or how many image tiles you have left in your subscription. And if you don't have any of those, you can purchase credits for those. That's an in-app purchase. But you can use this. Like if I click on this button for download, what that's going to do is that's going to bring in tiled high resolution images and it's going to replace the map data that was in there. So you got to give it a little bit of time because these are fairly high resolution um, map tiles, but it's going to go ahead and it's going to bring those in and then we're going to have a lot better picture of what this area is going to look like. All right, so if you take a look at this, you can see how now I have this uh, really high resolution, really detailed data where before I didn't. And really the best way to look at this is to look at the uh, divider line between the near map data that you've brought in and the regular map data. You can see how there's just no comparison. So then if I was to come back in here and unhide everything, 
So you can see how now I've got buildings in here, but I can also see that high resolution data. And if you wanted to, you could turn this on and off or toggle this on and off so that you could get a better look at this. But you can see how that near map data is just a huge, huge improvement over the regular map data. So one other thing, and this is a feature that I think has come out in the newest version of Placemaker, this is a video on Daniel Tal's website, or on Daniel Tal's channel, is they've also added the ability to import 3D meshes from NearMap. So NearMap also offers these 3D meshes that you can bring in so you can have actual textured buildings. Now my understanding is that there is an additional cost for this from NearMap, which doesn't really surprise me just considering that uh, the actual high resolution data it also has an additional cost but I think they now have the ability to bring in um, these 3d meshes if that's something that you need so again just something that would take forever to do by yourself um, you can definitely import these uh, near map you can definitely import these uh, 3D near map files. So like I said, I haven't had a chance to test this myself, but I'm really excited about it. I will follow up with a video about it as soon as I'm able to get a mesh to test. But again, just having the ability to create a textured 3D mesh um, is really kind of a big deal and I'm really excited about it, but I need to find out more. So just be aware that that's out there. I will link to Daniel's video in the notes down below and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you are interested in Placemaker, I believe that sale is still going on. So you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. But I wanted to give you kind of an overview if you did have the extension of how to use it. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.